Sailed Kruger specialise in one thing and one thing only. Luxury. They provide both ships and holidays to the wealthy, ensuring that they get to experience the stars while being bathed in opulence and receiving only the best. They also cater for a multitude of languages, including Leet speak, apparently. At least that's the assumption I'm making because the Dolphin's price tag without discount is as close to 1.337 million, just to make a point. Just let that sink in. They cater to the elite classes, right to the extent that a brand new Dolphin, their smallest ship, is literally priced for the elite. And that's the smallest ship in their product line. And whilst you can get discounts for all the usual sources, I suspect it's frowned upon by South Kruger. You can either afford their ships, or you can't. This isn't a ship designed for combat, or commodity trading, or mining. It's designed purely for shuttling people through the stars, to see the places that the average Joe will never get to see. Because the average Joe is poor, and would otherwise dirty the pristine interior of the ship. Hell, even if you own this ship, it's decreed you're too poor to see any parts of the ship apart from the outside of it and the cockpit. I'd love to see what's behind those proportionally massive windows, especially as the Dolphin is only one of three ships that can equip luxury cabins for the more discerning passenger. It's something that's only available to South Kruger ships, because ships made by other manufacturers are simply unworthy. Externally, you can see a nod to its aquatic namesake in its looks. It's a ship that has an incredibly smooth shell with very few jagged edges or hard corners. This ship has enormous tinted windows all around, giving your passengers the opportunity to take in some of those spectacular vistas as they travel through the stars. Even if we can't see in those windows from the outside. It also has an enormous external heatsink, helping it to keep cool at all times. Honestly, this ship looks smoother and more refined than some of Gutemeyer's efforts, at least from the right angles. The same refinement carries through to the cockpit, at least to an extent. It's not a question of whether there are loose cables or rust like you'd see on a Falcon de Lacy ship. It's more a question of whether you can see a speck of dirt. Spoiler alert, you can't. Presumably you have to be thoroughly decontaminated before even opening the doors to the cockpit. Otherwise, you don't get to preserve the pristine finish. On top of this, various panels on the walls and ceiling are painted purple, giving a regal touch to the cockpit. Which is actually pretty fortunate, as without this touch, I'm pretty sure it would feel as cold and sterile inside as the place where your neediest passengers got their plastic surgery on. So, with all this focus on a refined experience, you'd imagine that this ship was built for long distance travel in mind and You'd be absolutely right, with a minimal loadout, all the engineering tweaks, boosters, and a little bit of luck, you'll be able to hit over 65 light years in a single jump. And whilst this will suffer once you start loading in those passenger cabins, you'll be able to shift an impressive distance within a single jump, making those trips into the black a breeze. Plus on top of this, the Dolphin can run cool enough to charge your FSD while scooping for fuel and not overheating. Impressive stuff, and makes for quick progress at covering the distance. As for trading cargo, if you wanted to yeet your passengers out the nearest airlock along with their cabins and belongings, and then trade that space for cargo racks, you could do worse. From what I can tell, the Dolphin is the second largest capacity out of all of the small ships. Although if you're willing to move to a medium ship, the Type 6 transporter carries more and costs less. Given the two class one hardpoints, you're also stuck with laser mining if you want to go down that route to earn credits. I'm sure some of you might ask why you'd want to mine in a dolphin, but if you're in the mood to stick it to South Kruger, I can't think of a better way. Unless you've moved on to one of their bigger ships, at which point your options really open up. Combat is a very... meh... experience. You're essentially running Sidewinder grade weaponry in a ship that's larger and less manoeuvrable than a Sidewinder. It also has less armour than a Cobra Mark III. The shields aren't too bad for its class though, sitting between the Viper III and the Asp Explorer. It also has tight convergence and fairly decent mobility, so if you do feel the urge to poke holes in a competitor, 
you can run fixed weapons with a degree of success. It is worth mentioning though that the hard points are about halfway down the ventral hull, so you need to consider which angles will work and which will be blocked by your own ship. It's also not a slouch if you need to run away, which is handy for if you've got that passenger that wants to run to the hills as soon as your ship gets shot at. It's a pity in this situation that the onboard staff can't administer something to send the passengers on a voyage to trip out city whilst any potential combat situation gets resolved. After all, it's generally safer to stay inside the ship these days than it is to take your chances in an escape pod. Oh, and one other thing. That boost sound. It sounds like someone has rammed a cork into a dolphin's blowhole, only for it to be shot out with a massive release of pressure. So, that's the dolphin. South Kruger's baby liner. For all its faults, if you want to take this out to see some of the more beautiful sights out there, those sights are made better with this ship in the foreground. And those sights are made better still if you manage to get some schmuck to pay you for the privilege of going out there. Unless they get whiny, because you won't pick up some rare commodity for them along the way, but then you have the eject button to get you that little bit of peace and quiet out in the black. Hey, if you made it this far, then thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, there's more of these in the channel and there will be more to come as well. Also, if you liked what you saw, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons for the algorithm if you haven't already. It is very much appreciated. All of that aside, I hope you have a fantastic day and hopefully I'll see you real soon on the next video. Thank you. 07.